Carolyn. Um, and then Carolyn is obviously different in, in many different ways. And I, I get the, you know, jump into bed with her, like for, sure. for one night. The, it, it was more the afterwards that he seems to still have feelings for her, wanted to clearly wants a relationship with her. Uh, that was the more inconvenient to me. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. And it's, it's, it's such a weird sort of relationship for them to have too, because it's incredibly dangerous. I would say for both of them, right? Raylan's been down this road before with Ava. Um, and, and almost with, uh, what's her name? The redhead from, uh, from the mining company, right? Where he's essentially taking business and mixing it with pleasure. And in this particular instance, I think it could get both of them in an awful lot of trouble because we know that, you know, Carolyn has a duty of loyalty to her client (laughs) and, you know, she's after he gives her the sausage, she's, you know, potentially going to give up some information about Mansell to him, which would probably, I mean, almost certainly if it wasn't directly related to a crime that was going to be committed in the immediate future, uh, would almost certainly result in a breach of attorney client privilege and, and her, you know, losing her law license. Right. Right. But I, but I, at the same time, I I think she's also crossed a whole bunch of other attorney ethics issues. The fact that she seems to be representing sweetie, uh, and Clemens who, uh, if they don't have currently a conflict of interest, uh, sooner or later will, um, you know, whenever the, you have co-defendants in a criminal trial, each one has their own attorney. Yeah. And if so, um, you know, I, I think she, she definitely is playing fast and loose with a lot of attorney ethics rules, uh, <laughs> even before this. Yeah. And, and surprising, especially when you consider the fact that her partner, uh, her ex-husband, who we find out, you know, later in the in in the episode, uh, embezzled from her and broke a bunch of attorney ethics rules himself. Uh, interesting to see her kind of going down that same path, just in a slightly different way, not stealing right. money, but but compromising her morals at the very mm-hmm. least. So. Yeah, you know what? It's funny that you mentioned the husband because I like to. I get the impression, and and this is part of them being married, I suppose, is that there is more chemistry between her and uh, the uh, the ex husband yeah. than Raylan and Carolyn. Yeah, you know, just like more in the in the scenes that they're they're uh, especially in that scene where they're at at the end of this last episode or the whatever you know. Where, oh where yeah, yeah, they're at yeah. His house. Where where yeah. where they're at where they're where she and and Jamal are at his apartment. Yeah, I mean, that's his, a very uh, I, depressing I was, bachelor pad. <laughs> and I thought it was a very, that was probably one of the better scenes so far yeah. in this, uh, in this series that we've seen. So. Yeah, I think we got to see uh, uh, Anjanae Ellis uh, actually do a little bit of acting in that scene. And I was, I was pretty yeah. happy with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, so a couple of things here, I, I, I think, I think that the issue may actually be, so I started as I was watching this and, you know, uh, Rachel said the same thing. She's like, man, I don't buy this relationship for a second. And, uh, I went on the Reddit. I was, I was looking for an answer to a different question and I stumbled across the the live episode discussion thread and, uh, Holy crap. I figure it's as good a time as any to bring this up because we're talking about this, but man, people are, are mean on that Reddit. Oh, they are. People are mean on the internet. Yeah, on I Reddit. know. Isn't no, that no, weird? Okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. figured, you know, oh, it's a justified Reddit. Like people would be, people will be cool or whatever. Not so much. Like there is a sizable contingent. It's not a, uh, it's not a massive number of people, but there's a sizable contingent of people who are seriously taking issue with this because she's bigger than uh, Winona <laughs> in oh, wi- in terms of weight. And there's a ton of like, quote unquote, fat shaming going on. And there's people who are taking issue with the race of the character also. Um, and I get apparently that started when they announced who the actors were for the show, uh, because in the books, to be fair, in the books, Carolyn Wilder is white, but that doesn't matter. Mm. Like, it was, like, I don't know. The actress is, is not white, but 
I don't know. Well, that... it, it, if, I, if I remember, if I think there are correctly the the character in Primeval because Primeval is not a Raylan Gibbons book. Correct. It was a, Elmore Leonard, and it was a, I think I want to say Hispanic. Yeah, Ray um, Cruz. The, yeah, the, the, the guy pro, who right the, the protagonist. So it was, it was yeah. Right. So so it was a, it was Hispanic and white. Now you have white and black. So. Right. Whatever. Yeah. So whatever. <laughs> exactly. Thing. Yeah. I was I was very surprised to see that people were so worked up about to the point where people are making some really inappropriate comments and getting moderated and everything else. I was I was very surprised to see that. I I, I will also say and and we can talk. I think it's a good opportunity to talk a little bit about this. How are you guys feeling about the show? Kind of overall at this point in the season, we've got three episodes left. Uh, as I said, I thought the fourth episode felt a little bit slow. Uh, the fifth episode thing started to happen, it felt like. But um, but I feel like we've got a lot of ground to cover before we can wrap up the season, and we've only got three episodes left to do it in. I think the pacing's a little bit off. I don't know how you guys feel. I'll let Randy go first. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that I, I think that it might be as 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 Michael was uh, talking about the they're basically inserting Raylan into the story, and maybe it they shouldn't have. Maybe it should, they should have just made this like oh, it's not even justified. It's just like Elmore Leonard uh, uh, series, and 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 kept Raylan out and cast somebody else as the as Ray Cruz uh, for the lead. Um, I mean, that might have been that might have even been better um, in certain ways. Yeah, because, uh, I, I agree. It doesn't it it it's definitely starting to not feel a ton like justified to me. But I think yeah. that that's again, you, you can't take a character like Raylan and just pick him up out of De, out of Harlan County and stick him into Detroit and say, oh, it's the same show. You have to expect that there's going to be differences to the show. Raylan has evolved as we've discussed over 10 or 15 years, whatever that's fine too, but it does, it does not, there is an element where it doesn't feel like the same show from time to time. I will say that. Then there's elements, there's times where it very much feels like the same show. Like when they're beating us over the head with the Ray Raylan thing at the end of the episode Mm. and it's like, Oh yeah, he's Ray and this is Raylan and the guy in the book's name is Ray and this is Raylan. And Oh look, Ray Cruz kind of did Raylan things in the past and now Raylan is judging him for it. But it it, it felt a little, it was a little heavy handed on the part of the writers, but you know, sometimes you got to do that because the audience doesn't always get it on the first look. Yeah. It it, it was a little um, strange, like a fish out of water story can sometimes work. It's just not here. Or maybe it's just because we're so used to the world of justified, Um, you know, know, so before we got on the call, um, I was in Detroit for a few days earlier this week. Now I'm in Kentucky. Uh, so I'm, I'm, tra- I'm traversing the, the various worlds of Raylan Givens this week. And there's definitely a difference between just culturally and the feel of Eastern Kentucky versus Detroit. Um, I can tell you firsthand but for both of those. And uh, they're just, in real life, those two places have very different feel to them. And um, I think they're still trying to find their footing in the Detroit world that, and it could just be the burdens on us as an audience that we're biased by what we've already experienced with the justified world. Um, and it's kind of interesting if, you know, Elmore Leonard is originally from Detroit. A lot of the stuff takes place in Detroit. Um, and they did a great job with, say, Out of Sight, which takes place in Detroit. Yep. And, you know, excellent movie. I think you guys have referenced it in, uh, in the show before. Um, and I think they're just, they're having a problem. Either they're having a problem or we as an audience are having a problem of accepting that it's just a different show. Yeah. And I think they, they actually, they, they, they did kind of make that clear. They said, we don't see this as season seven of Justified. Or I think that's whatever season number it should be. We don't see this season seven of Justified. We see this as a different show just with, a character moving from one to the other. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. And, and that doesn't and that's the thing that I think is the difference between kind of how I feel about the show and what I saw on Reddit about the, how the, the people who I would call detractors feel about the show, which is there are a lot of people on there saying, oh, this feels like a generic boilerplate cop show. You could, you know, if this were an episode of Law and Order, you never would have known the difference. And I disagree with that very strongly. I think the writing for this show is still very strong. I think the characters are interesting and there's some depth to them. I think we're finally getting to see some of that depth to the characters that you don't get in a typical procedural cop show. Um, but at the same time, they're, they're a little bit I think they're a little bit right because it doesn't feel like justified. So they're they're sort of analogizing it to the the thing that they're most familiar with to analogize it to when when the reality is it's as you said Michael it's basically this a, a new show with the same or similar writers and one character who's the same character. Uh, I, there's been, there's been a lot of shows like this in the past, right? Like Charles in charge, <laughs> if, if I can mention <laughs> Charles in charge was spin off of, of, uh, happy days ultimately. Right. I mean, if you, if you track it back, it's what? happy, it's happy days, right? No, Joni loves Chachi. Was Joni a Joni, yeah, of, Joni uh, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get the, uh, but play that bumper. <laughs> the Charles, and Char Charles and Charles takes place of 20 some years after happy. Day. Okay. All right. Well, okay. So Joni <laughs> loves Chachi. Okay. So, yeah, Joni loves Chachi then is a spinoff of, of happy. Days. And there was another spinoff from happy days. I think it was, the, well, at least it was the same universe. Like it was uh, Laverne and Shirley too. Right. And okay. Mark and, Mark and Mindy too. Yeah. 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 And Mark out there again, Mark and Mindy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there, so yeah. those might be actually better examples of what I'm talking about, right? This is sort of like yeah. a Raylan given spinoff. Um, well, I, I would say a better analogy would be, if I may, yeah, the Ropers. Oh, sure. yeah. You know, yeah. There you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when when you said that, the Jeffersons <laughs> popped in my head too, which is basically yeah. Well, 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 all the family had a bunch of spinoffs. Yeah. They had the Jeffersons. They had Maude. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, but <laughs> and then the oh. Golden Girls was a spinoff of Mod, right? No, no. <laughs> just Get that bumper again, being wrong Chris. again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, now the Ropers. Now was there? A, did Jack Tripper or John Ritter also have a a show also spinoff from Three's Company too? Or is that well, what I think the Ropers think also? That, hmm. I think the Ropers was the only spinoff of Three's Company. Okay. If, I, if I'm correct, <laughs> well, our listeners will definitely correct us if we're not correct. So, if the row, if there is another Three's Company spinoff, I don't know the Andy Griffith show or whatever. Maybe, maybe it's. Yeah. I, I, for and you also reason, have, you I, also have with you know a Joey after after Friends. You had Joey, you know, oh, that's got right. his own show. Oh yeah, I've forgotten about Joey. Entirely. He went out to L.A. to be an actor or something like that, right? And it was the uh, the Sopranos, uh, Adriana. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> well, this you is know. sort of tantamount to like, if, if we think about, you know, like kind of analogizing this to one of the other great shows of the, of the two thousands, if, if Tony Soprano had gotten his own spinoff, uh, like say Tony goes into witness protection and they do a, <laughs> they do a spinoff series about Tony Soprano or, you know, Tom Tom Stevenson <laughs> in, uh, Tom in, in in Topeka Kansas or whatever that's sort of that's sort of what this feels like but you had the same writers and kind of the same quality of content um it's just mm -hmm. not the same that's just, fair yeah. yeah just not the same and so uh, all right, let's see what else we've got here. So we've got uh, Norbert and Maureen we talked about a little bit. They, they did mention the Beverly Hills cop thing, which I think, Randy, we forgot to mention on, a, on the podcast, but I mentioned in the description of the podcast last week because mm -hmm. uh, we talked about how the red light, green light thing that Clement Mansell pulls to drop the tail is yeah. the same thing that happens to Tim with uh with daryl crow jr in uh, season five it's literally yeah. like exactly the same thing but yeah. it also happened in beverly hills cop too and i remembered that when i was writing the uh the episode description <laughs> i put it in there but i don't yeah. think we mentioned it well and, and uh axel foley is a detroit cop i think right? also true it? yes yeah. okay <laughs> yes he is 
<laughs> yeah. Look at all these connections. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, oh, and then we, we get, we find out that Norbert's on ice for the rest of the investigation. I wonder if he's going to show back up, but it appears that he's not because Maureen, 